can't touch this. You can't touch this. You can't touch this. That sure was something. MC Hammer would definitely be very proud. I definitely agree. Hey, did you see that new Cheetos MC Hammer commercial? Yeah, that's all I think about when I watch this. Me too. I bet it will be stuck in everyone's head by the time we leave. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Dharma's Finest 2020. <laughs> I am one of your hosts, Hannah Bruce. And I'm your other host, Madison Paiva. Before we start, I'd just like to point out the three main exits in the building. Please look around to locate them. Please refrain from all cell phone use and cameras with flash so that you do not miss any of this fabulous show and to not distract any of our contestants because if you know these boys, they get easily distracted. Tonight, 10 of the finest young men from the Dartmouth senior class will be competing for the title of Dartmouth's finest. Wait, wait, Maddie, breaking news. And it's not the time. No, it really is. My Apple Watch says Tom Brady's staying with the Patriots? Hannah? Yeah? Did you not watch the Super Bowl? If the Patriots ain't in it, I ain't watching it. That's fair. Anyways, first off, we'd like to introduce our judges. First off, we have the wonderful English teacher, Miss Lassie. <laughs> Next, we have world language teacher, Mrs. Chamberlain. Next up, we have another English teacher, Mrs. Grieve. And last but certainly not least, our last English teacher, Mr. Lima. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for, our contestants. First up, for casual wear, we have Jared Morin. Fun fact, he was my fifth grade boyfriend. <laughs> Jared is a student athlete who has played football and basketball. He is the son of Brett and Liz Morin and has a sister, Sarah Morin. Jared likes spending time hanging out with his friends. He also enjoys watching sports. 
Jared is currently undecided on where he would like to attend college, but he wants to study business. Thank you, Jared. Next up to the stage, we have Camden Lawton. Camden has two sisters, Emerson and Sorrel, and a dog, Alta. Camden loves to spend time with his friends, ski, play music, and chase adventure. He loves the outdoors and can often be found at the beach or watching the stars. He is not sure where he would like to attend college yet, but school is definitely in his future. Thank you, Camden. Following Camden is Diogo Fernandez Tavares. Diogo was born in Portugal and moved to America at age five. His mother is his biggest role model. He is the assistant editor of the school's newspaper, The Spectrum. He plans on going to college, but he is not sure where yet. He would like to thank mom, Carl, Carlos, Miss Chamberlain, Miss Cossett, Mr. Higgins. Thank you, Diogo. Up next, we have the unique Travis Tatro, AKA Diesel. Travis likes to play video games and listen to music. His favorite is old songs like rock and country. Travis has what he calls a crazy family. He likes to hang out with his grandparents and listen to old rock music. Travis has two sisters, which he loves very much. His plans for next year are to party, stay up all night, and go to Virginia. Thank you, Travis. Up next is Mason Benty. Mason lives with his with mom, Christine, and younger brother, Gavin. His hobbies include reading, overthinking small problems, video games, writing, and procrastination. He plans to attend college next year, where he would like to major in either biology or computer-related sciences. Keeping it cool, Mason. Speaking of cool, here comes my BFF, Ethan Meniz. Ethan lives at home with his mom, Tanya, dad, Mike, brothers Jacob and Cameron, and sister Morgan. He plays baseball, track, and unified basketball. He will be attending Framingham State University to play baseball and get a master's in special education. Thank you, Ethan. He sure did have swag. You know who else has swag? Andrew Bano. Andrew lives with his mom, Karen, dad, Steve, and dog, Cooper. In his free time, he enjoys fishing local ponds and lakes, snowboarding in the winter, and playing for the tennis team in the spring. He is grateful for his friends and family who have shaped him into the person he is today. He is still unsure about his plans for next year, but college is in his future. Thank you, Andrew. Next, we have William Smith, and no, not the famous one. Will is the loving son of Kim and Mark Smith. Will has three older brothers and a younger sister, a total of four siblings. Will spends most of his free days shaping surfboards or chasing swell. Will also enjoys spending time with his friends and watching romantic comedies. His perfect idea for a date would be long romantic walks on the beach. Next year, he will be attending college. Thank you, Will. Next up, we have Nathan Stone. Nate Stone was born to Lara and Jeff Stone. He has two brothers, Max and Sam, and a lovely golden doodle, Nona. Nate enjoys long walks on the beach, picking beautiful sea glass. He also loves skiing, running, lacrosse, and all activities related to motion and outdoors. He has decided to do theater this year and is having a great time. He, Nate plans to study psychology at a college in New England. Thank you, Nate. Last, but certainly not least, we have Ewan Oliveira. Ewan lives at home with mom, Pam, and dad, Mark, and a sister, Jessa. He is the captain of the Dartmouth High School varsity football team. In his free time, he likes to eat Cache Saint Georges, eat pound. In the spring, he likes playing lacrosse. He will be attending Bridgewater State University to study health science and play on their football team. Nice job, Ewan. Let's hear it for our contestants. Now that we've officially introduced you to all of our seniors, we will be moving on to the talent proportion. But first, while we are adjusting a few things to begin our first act, I will be traveling around the audience to ask some trivia questions about our contestants. Please raise your hand if you know the answer. Question number one. Which contestant is partially deaf and colorblind? Hello, what is your name? 
This is Emily, and what do you think the answer is? You and Oliveira is correct. All right, next question. Which contestant stuck an eraser in his ear and had to be dismissed in the third grade? Oh, we have a takeaway. Name, please. This is Maggie, and what is your answer? Diogo is correct. He did stick an eraser in his ear. Back to you, Maddie. Now for the first talent of the night. For the first talent, Jared will be singing and dancing to Funky Town. Let's welcome Jared to the stage. Gotta make a move to a town that's right for me. Over here. <laughs> over there, over there. It's time to keep me moving, keep me grooving with some energy. Well, I talk about it, talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. Come on, I want some energy. Let's go. Talk about, talk about, talk about moving. Woo! Gotta move on. <laughs> Gotta move on. Gotta move on. A little more energy now, come on. Won't you take me to Funky Town? Won't you take me to Funky Town? Won't you take me to Funky Town? Funky Town. Sure was right. Do, don't even say it. How did you know what I was gonna say? Hun, I think we both knew what you were gonna say. Mm, yeah, you're right. It's fine. Tribute time? time? Let's do it. All righty, for some more questions, here we go. Which contestant has never ever eaten at McDonald's? Let's see some parents answering over here. Hi, what's your name? <laughs> Christian Silvera. And who do you think has never eaten at McDonald's? It is, great guess, it is Andrew Bano. All righty, next question. Which contestant has a fake front left tooth? It's a little tough one, but it's okay. There's a hand, there's a hand. Oh. Yeah. Hi, is this Christine? Hi, and who do you think is the answer? Uh, what a guess, so it might be Mason Benty. It is Mason Benty. <laughs> Maddie, back to you. Next up for our second talent, we have Camden Lawton playing the piano and blessing our ears with his amazing talent. Please give a hand for Camden. <laughs> Hello everybody, um, my act tonight is a tribute to Kobe and Gigi Bryant, who tragically passed away in January. Um, I think, you know, even if you don't know who they were, it's something that we can all sympathize with. Um, they had, or at least Kobe had a very, very positive impact on the world, and I wanted to honor his life and all that he did with my own um, rearranged rendition of the song, See You Again.
Can are you crying? No, no, there's just like an eyelash in my eye. Something like that. Sure, that's what they all say. Oh, I'm sorry, that was just so touching to me. I do have to admit, it was a very good performance. But now, it's time for some more trivia. Here I go. All righty. Which of the contestants has rescued an aquatic bird after suffocating on a fishing line? So sweet. Here's a hand. Oh, do we have a hand up? I see a hand. I was going to give you a hint, but I guess not. Hi, Miss Green. Hi, what's your name? This is Mark Lawton, and what is the answer to the question? <laughs> oh, Camden Lawton. <laughs> Very nice. All righty. Next question. Who legitimately asked when the 4th of July was? <sighs> I see one. Um, let me, let me try. I'm just going to scoot in here. I'm so sorry. Actually, what is your name? Michael. Michael. And what is the answer to my question, Michael? The answer to your question is my son, <laughs> Ethan Moniz. His son, yes. Ethan Moniz. Very nice. Back to you, Maddie. Next up, for our next talent, we have Diogo reading us some of his original poetry. Please welcome Diogo. Howdy. <laughs> I'm going to read some of my original poetry. I hope it doesn't make you cry. <laughs> but after every poem, can you guys snap for me? Gracias. This first poem, a president's speech, was something that came to me when I was watching a Trump speech. <laughs> I'm not trying to get anybody mad in here, but that's how I interpret it. A president's speech. What is there to speak? My reaction aren't fight or flight. I freeze in the present. I spew to the present. My real voice is trapped in it. Ricochets a humble child, but perform Revered, do I say, this means that, that is wrong? Please believe the words acted as right, thus begin war against hate. I pick which to loathe and which to celebrate. Thank you. My next poem is Blinding Snow. Uh, this poem was written after I saw snow touch the ground. <laughs> I love snow, but I hate touching it. <laughs> Blinding snow. Dear sons and daughters of 32, collects on the highway of us so blinding and white like the first light on the face of a newborn. Shelter it. Mother and father give all their warmth. Melts on the highway of us so slippery and fright like the first mistake with the uncertainty of a child. Condemn it. Aunts and uncles will draw all their warmth. Swirls on the highway of us, so mysterious and quiet, like the first loss in, in frozen heart of a teenager. Console it. Family and friends attach all their warmth. Bellows on the way, highway of us, so spontaneous and violent, like the first crime by vehement hands of an adult. Conceal it. Judges and lawyers erase all their warmth. Ceases on the highway of us, so ambiguous and light, like the first freed, unfiltered breath of an inmate. Immerse it. No one and nobody take all your warmth. My next poem is called Stars. I wrote this after watching a BoJack Horseman episode on Netflix. Highly recommend to watch that show. That show's really good, even though it's about a horse. Uh, stars. It seems. Stars attenuate before fate. The warmth becomes cold between billions of years, between centuries. With words on stones, the stars are found idiosyncratic. Stars are Geminis, 
fire, and desire. Can I get a holler? Thank you. Good night, Dartmouth. How elegant and so sweet. Agreed. It kind of reminds me of like those walks on nice, warm beaches, unlike Dartmouth. Oh, I can't wait for summer. Me too. Seniors 2020, baby. I think I'm ready for some more fun trivia. All right, here we go. Let's see. Who arguably has the best hair in DHS history? His blonde, curly cues. <laughs> All right, hi, name please. This is Kim Smith, and what is the answer to my question? William Smith is the answer. All right, next, next question. Which contestant also arguably writes poetry in his free time? This one's a little hard. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, say name. Mason mm, it is not Mason Benty on my paper. It's Jared Morin. <laughs> oh gosh. All right, back to you, Maddie. Next up, we have Mr. Travis Tatro showing us some comedy. Hello everyone, how's everyone doing? I'm... I'm Travis. Wait, did you just in my line? I'm really excited you are doing Dharma's Finest. Thanks man, I'm just getting a little bit nervous out there. So much. Don't be, your talent is great. I love your video. Are you going to show everyone? You know what, Travis? I will show everyone. Everyone, enjoy. Travis, hit it. into the dungeons of Cronin. Let's follow in. Knock, knock. Who's there? Tank. Tank who? You're welcome. Knock, <laughs> okay. knock. Who's there? Woo. Woo hoo. I'm glad you're excited. <laughs> Travis, I'm here with? I'm Dr. Bangs. Yeah, all right. So, how does a scientist uh, freshen his mouth? They don't. No, they use experiments. Ah, uh, good. I want Travis. I'm Thank here you. with Mrs. Franco. And we're doing our jokes. All right. What do you call the an old snowman? I don't know what you call an old Water. snowman. Water. <laughs> it's time for a breakdown. Never gonna get it. 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 Never gonna get it, never gonna get it, never gonna get it. I'm here with Mr. Boudria. And we have a joke to tell. So, why did the golfer wear uh, two pairs of pants? I don't know. Why did the golfer wear two pairs of pants? In case he gets hole in one. Ah! Two thumbs up on that. Hello, I'm Travis. I'm here with Paul Hummerson. Uh, hello, Hummerson. And we're gonna do a joke. So, where do the uh, pencils go for vacation? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. <laughs> 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 All right. Knock knock. Who's there? Ison. Ison who? I see you two looking at me. Oh, you know it, Travis. Travis with another famous knock knock joke. Um, knock knock. Who's there? I ran. I ran what? I ran here. I'm tired. 
I bet you are. All right. Hi, I'm Travis. I'm here with Mrs. McPhee. And we're doing knock knock jokes. Yeah, we are. All right. Knock knock. Who's there? Boo. Boo who? Don't cry. It's just a joke. <laughs> oh. Hi, I'm Travis. I'm here with Mr. Freights. And we're doing knock knock jokes. <laughs> I love knock knock jokes. Me too. Knock knock. Who's there? Viper. Viper who? Viper, your nose is running. <laughs> All right, what is a what is a witch's um, favorite subject? What is a witch's favorite subject? Uh, it's got to be something about Halloween or something. Spelling. <laughs> that was just hilarious. I know, right? Travis always knows how to crack up a good joke. Speaking of jokes, our next act is pretty funny, too. Indeed. Next up, we have Mason Benty reading Dr. Seuss's Walk It In My Pocket. Let's give it up for Mason. Hey, everybody. So, we've got a lot of music and, you know, some pretty energetic acts. So, I thought we would just read a book and relax. Wait, wait. Hold up. Uh, it says you have a guest appearance by J.G. the God? All right, fine, okay, Dr. Seuss, hey, okay, you see it, yeah, walk it in my pocket, walk it in my pocket, walk it in my pocket, there's a walk it in my pocket, walk it in my pocket, walk it in my pocket, in my pocket, there's a walk it in my pocket. Did you ever have a feeling? There's a basket in your basket, or a neuro in your bureau, or a was it in your closet? Sometimes I feel quite certain there's a journey in the curtain. Sometimes I have a feeling there's a sock behind the clock, and that self up on the shelf. I have talked to him myself. I said that self up on the shelf. I have talked to him myself. That's the kind of house I live in. There's a nink up in the sink, and that zip up in the lamp, and they're nice, I really think. Yeah, some of them are friendly like that yard up in the pot but that yaddle in the bottle some are friendly some are not like that zable on my table and that gear under the chair but that bofa on my sofa well i wish he wasn't there and the nubbards in my cupboards yeah they're great to have about but that new thrush on my toothbrush see him i could do without and the one i'm really scared of is the bug under the rug said the one i'm really scared of is the bug under the rug and that chimney in my chimney i don't like him at all and it makes me kind of nervous when the saw screws down the halls and the Yep's up on my steps, yeah, they're fun to have around. There are many, many other, other friends that I have found. There's the teller and the never, and the teller and the fella, and the weller and the fella, and the zeller in my cellar, and that dealing on my ceiling, and the sour in my shower, and that zillow on my pillow. I could talk to him for hours. I don't care if you believe it. That's the kind of house I live in, and I hope I never leave it. You can't come in, you're forbidden. Yeah. I don't care if you believe it, that's the kind of house I live in, and I hope I never leave it. You can't come in, you're forbidden. Walk it in my pocket, 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 in my pocket, there's a walk it in my pocket. Yeah, Seuss, read me a book. Woo! interesting. Yeah, I love that song. Hey, you know what time it is? Intermission time? Yes, there will be a brief 15-minute intermission for the sake of our contestants. For the time being, please enjoy the slideshow we put together to entertain you while we are gone. Also, please don't forget to donate to the GoFundMe, as the juniors will sadly be missing out on most of the fundraising. Thank you.
I think... Okay. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, boys. <laughs> I'm good, Ethan. How are you? You did good, by the way. Oh, of course. <laughs> All righty. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the second half of the 2020 Dartmouth's Finest competition. This year, we have an exciting new part of the show. The boys worked very hard to create a jaw-dropping version of Dartmouth's very own American Ninja Warrior. Contestants will be judged on their enthusiasm, individuality, and of course, their humor. Please give the boys a round of applause as we show you the very first edition.
applause. Call me the fat ninja. <laughs>
When it rains, it pours, but you didn't even notice. It ain't raining anymore. It's hard to breathe when all you know is the struggle of staying above the rising water line. Well, the sky is finally open. The rain and wind stop blowing, but you're stuck out in the same old storm again. You hold tight to your umbrella, well darling I'm just trying to tell you that there's always been a rainbow. can see what I see, you be blinded by the colors, yellow, red, and orange, and green, and at least a million others, so tie up the bow, take off your coat, and take a look around, cause the sky is finally open, the rain and wind stop blowing, but you're stuck out in the same old storm again. You're tied to your umbrella, well darling I'm just trying to tell you that there's always been a rainbow hanging over tie up your bow, take off your coat, and take a look around. Everything is all right now, cause the sky is finally open, the rain and wind stop blowing, but you're stuck out in the same old storm again. Let go of your umbrella, cause darling I'm just trying to tell you that there's always been a rainbow hanging over your head. Yeah, there's always been a rainbow hanging over your head. That was great. Very beautiful, if I must say so myself. Um, Hannah. 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 Hey, I'm back. Oh my God. Do you like it? Didn't, did you Isn't did you beautiful? change? Of course I did. Don't you know how extra I am? I I can't. I have no words. <laughs> Do you know how extra I am, girl? Anyway. I have, I, I said I don't, I have no words. Plus, we're twinning now, so it works. You're just too much. Anyway, next up, we have Will and his backup dancers, Caitlin and Sophia, dancing to a Will Smith medley. Please welcome Will. Now this is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down. And I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there. I'll tell you how I became the prince of a town called Bel Air. Go home to Bel Air! Uh, uh, yeah, 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 uh, Miami. <laughs> Can y'all feel that? Can y'all feel that? Jig it out, uh. Here I am in the place where I come let go In Miami, the base and the sunset low Every day like a Mardi Gras Everybody party all day, no work, all play, okay? So we sip a little something, leave the rest to spill Me and Charlie at the bar, running up a high bill Nothing left
less than ill when we dress to kill. Every time the ladies pass, they be like, Can y'all feel me? All ages and races, real sweet faces, every different nation, Spanish, Haitian, Indian, Jamaican, black, white, Cuban, or Asian. I only came for two days to play it, but every time I come, I always wind up staying. This the type of town I can spend a few days in Miami, the city that keeps the roof blazing. Getting jiggy with it. Getting jiggy with it. Getting jiggy with it. 850 IS if you need a lift. Who's the kid in the drop? Who else will slip? Living that life, some consider a myth. Rock from South Street to one, two, fifth. Women used to tease me, give it to me now, nice and easy. Since I moved up like Georgia Weezy. Like getting, thought I took a spell, but I didn't trust. The lady of my life, she hitting. Hit her with a drop top, with the ribbon. Crib for my mom on the outskirts of Philly. You trying to flex on me? Don't be silly. Getting jiggy with it. Getting jiggy with it. Getting jiggy with it. That mix was so cool. I wonder who did it. Mm, yeah, me too. Guess. Uh, um, DJ ABL. Uh, Maddie. What? It, it, it was me. Oh my, it was so good. Thanks, babe. Oh, of course. <laughs> Alrighty, I think it's time for some more trivia, audience. There we go. Alrighty, this is just going to be one question for the time being. Which contestant threw up Popeyes while practicing their talent at home? Did that one. Oh, we did that one, LOL. <laughs> Who got an allergic reaction in my car while coming home from Providence? Oh gosh, this dress is very long. <laughs> You're doing great, sweetie. Thanks, bestie. Love ya. Love you too. Hmm, let's, let me scooch on over to my bestie, Tanya Manese. Um, name please. <laughs> it was Ethan. Let's have a round of applause for Ethan. <laughs> All right, Maddie, back to you. Next up, we have Nate Stone singing To Just You and I by Tom Walker. Let's welcome Nate. Let's go out. I'll put my heart out through my mouth. This year's been hard for us, no doubt. Let's leave a glass for another one Let all the things that we've overcome Bring hope to us Cause you and me, we can hold this out Only you understand how I'm feeling now, yeah And I know I can tell you anything You won't judge, you're just listening, yeah Cause you're the best thing that ever happened to me Cause my darling, you and I Take over the world One step at a time Just you and I Just you and I Cause you're the only one Who brings light just like the sun One step at a time Just you and I Just you and I Let's go out And reminisce about the days When we were broke not getting paid And taking trips on the weekend I would drive down to see ya And we would paint the town Too many shots I'll be passing out Cause I could never keep up Quad vibes now I'm puking up And I know I can tell you anything You won't judge, you're just listening Yeah, cause you're the best thing That ever happened to me Cause my darling, you and I Can take over the world one step at a time, just you and I, just you and I. Cause you're the 
only one who brings light just like the sun. One step at a time, just you and I, just you and I. It's out of chasing paper, staring at these screens. Been saving up for weeks now, just to get to you, my dear. And though you're far from my home, this ain't no weekend bar. You know my heart grows fonder. Must be city love, cause my darling, you and I could take over the world one step at a time. Just you and I, just you and I. Cause my darling, you and I could take over the world one step at a time. Just you and I, just you and I. Cause you're the only one who brings light just like the sun. One step at a time, just you and I, just you and I, yeah. One step at a time, just you and I, yeah. One step at a time, just you and I. Wow, I really never knew he had that in him. That was beautiful. I know, a lot of these contestants have really proven themselves tonight. I have to agree, the talent is absolutely through the roof. Well, we have just one more talent for the night. Ewan and his Backstreet Boys will be performing to a special mix of songs. Let's welcome Ewan. Hey Ewan. especially after that throwback. Now we have a few people we would like to thank. Slade's Form Aware for donating all the tuxes tonight. In addition, they are donating a free tux to the winner. When it comes to tuxes, guys, please remember Slade's Form Aware, located behind the Friendlies in Dartmouth. We'd also like to thank Allendale Country Club for donating a membership to our winner. Now, please welcome to the stage the junior class officers. Good evening. 
We'd like to start by thanking everyone who has devoted their time to making show, sure that this show was possible. The contestants have all given up many days after school practicing for this show. Um, the tech crew has also donated their time and efforts to making sure that this show ran as smoothly as possible. Most of all, we would like to thank our class advisors, Ms. Brittingham and Ms. Taylor, for all of the work. <laughs> for all of the work that they have put into this show. There is a lot of planning that goes in behind the scenes, and they have put their best foot forward to making sure that this show ran successfully as it could. We'd also like to thank everyone who's taken the time out of their night tonight to tune in live, or even the families who've been here tonight who are graciously gracing us with their presence, and also to the people outside in our student parking lot who are watching it live because they couldn't be here with us tonight. We're glad you're all able to come here to help support the contestants, the MCs, the, the attendants, and also the extras who are able to put this show together tonight. And on behalf of the class of 2021, I'd like to thank all of our amazing sponsors for their monetary contributions that are going to go directly towards our prom, junior banquet, and graduation. I'd like to offer a special thank you to Extreme Drywall, South Coast and Associates, and the South Coast Business Alliance for their generous donations to our class. And lastly, we would like to give a big thank you to the community who have donated to our GoFundMe, which is in the description in this video if you would like to donate now. Um, please tune in and watch who will be crowned Dartmouth's finest. Thank you. All righty. Our next category for the night is the classiest of them all. Our boys will come out in their formal wear with their beautiful attendants right by their side. First up for tonight, we have Jared Morin, accompanied by the wonderful Caitlin Webb. We have Camden Lawton, accompanied by Lindsay Oliveira. Woo! Hey. Next up, we have Diogo Fernandez Tavares, accompanied by Maggie Sullivan. We have Travis Tatro, accompanied by Emily Senra. Next up is Mason Benti, accompanied by Emily Fantasia. Eat the Manese, accompanied by Sophia Levitt. Now we have Andrew Bano, accompanied by Sierra Yim. Smith, accompanied by Sophia Reardon. Now we have Nathan Stone, accompanied by Ava Garcia. But certainly not least, we have you and Oliveira, accompanied by Riley Haynes. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, contestants and attendants. You all look absolutely wonderful. Now is the time where we would like to ask each contestant a specific question. Each contestant will be judged on their answer. All righty, here we go. Take a deep breath in and release. <laughs> First up, we have Jared Morin. If you were 80 years old, what's something you'd tell your kids? If I was 80 years old, I'd probably tell my kids that my senior year, I lived through the coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, thank you. Next up, we have Diogo. What's your best high school memory and why? My best high school memory has to be being the assistant editor for the Spectrum. It's one of my greatest memories. I love writing and I had a chance to prove that I was a good writer to the school. Thank you. Next up is Mason Benty. Where do you see yourself in five years? In five years, I'd say I see myself running some sort of massive conglomerate and owning most of you in your jobs. Um, just basically making more money than most of you. <laughs> I hope you achieve it, hon. <laughs> Next up, we have Ethan Moniz. What is one thing you would like the people to learn about you from your social media profiles? Uh, so one thing that I want people to learn about me is that, obviously, I uh, play baseball. And uh, <laughs> I'm always, a lot of my posts are, like, not dark and sad. Uh, so know that I'm a very happy person and very out there and hoping to help everybody I can. Next up is Nathan Stone. Who's one person from Dartmouth High School that you'll never forget? One person from Dartmouth High School would probably be my uh, freshman year uh, English teacher, Miss Lassie, who's also a judge. Uh, might be a little bit of a kiss up, but still true. Uh, she has really made me into the writer that I am today. Uh, I was in AP Composition or AP Comprehension and Language with her last year. Um, our class gave her a handful, but we still had a really fun time. Um, and I really feel like she's made me into the man I am today. Thank you. Next up, we have Ewan Oliveira. If you could travel anywhere in the world, where would you go? If I could travel anywhere in the world, I'd probably go to Portugal, um, mainly because I have a lot of family there and it's just, it's where all my family originates from. And it would just be nice to see uh, the islands of the Azores and just where, just, yeah, just where all my family grew up. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Ewan. Up next is Will Smith. If you were stranded on a desert island, what would you bring with you and why? If I was stranded on a desert island, that's a very good question. Um, I'd probably bring, I'd probably bring uh, my family because um, we've been through a lot together. We go on a lot of um, excursions together and uh, I think we'd be able to figure out how to survive well and uh, work together as a team. And um, yeah, teamwork's the biggest thing in family, so I have to say my family. Thank you, Will. Up next, we have Andrew Bano. If you could go back in time, what year would you travel to? If I could go back in time, what year would I travel to? Um, 
I would try probably travel back to like 2004, 2005 when I was a little kid. Um, being a little kid, there's so much joy and just happiness and such carefree um, ability that you have when you're young. You don't know you're innocent and the years in like 2004 and 2005, those years, me being a child, were amazing. Um, being an only child and um, <laughs> But um, yeah, my family just was so supportive and just made it such a great time for growing up. So I would go back then. Thank you. Up next we have Travis Tatro. What is one thing you change about yourself and why? One thing that I share about myself, right? Change. Um, the one thing I would change would actually wouldn't be anything. I kind of like it how it is. Yeah. Cheers to that, Trav. That was great, Trav. And lastly, we have Camden Lawton. If you could be someone famous for a day, who would it be? If I could be someone famous for a day, ooh, that's a very good question. Um. Hmm. <laughs> um. Wow, that's a that's a very, that's a very good question to stump me on. Um, I would say that I would probably be ooh, I know, uh, Greta Thunberg, because I'm very with the whole um climate change movement. I feel very strongly about that. I think she's a very big influence on you know. The world itself and being so young she's you know not much younger than us and she's doing amazing things for the world you know act uh all that activism for or just awareness for the climate which is ultimately our future so i think if i could have that type of influence on the world i would love to do that thank you that was very well said At this time, each contestant would like to give a rose to a special person out in the crowd. Let's give it up for our contestants. At this time, we'd like to interview our judges to kill some time while they tally up points. See you soon, contestants. All right, I'm gonna come to this side. I'm gonna start with Wesley Lima. Mr. Lima, I just saw you today. How are you doing? I'm doing just fine. What's your favorite part of the show tonight? Wow, my favorite part. Uh, my favorite part's all the talents. I didn't know any of these guys. I didn't know most of them had any talent, actually. Uh, <laughs> I've seen you and lift some weights. I've seen Camden attempt to read The Great Gatsby. But <laughs> I have never seen, you know, these guys come out here and sing and dance, play the piano. So I'm pretty impressed with all of them. Thank you. How about you, Mrs. Grieve? How are you liking the show tonight? 
I think it's great. I love the American Ninja Warrior. Uh, very unique addition to the show this year. Great job. I give them a lot of props for uh, coming out here and doing this in light of everything that's going on. Great job, everyone. Thank you. I definitely agree. Back to you, Hannah. And next we have Mrs. Chamberlain. What is your favorite part of the show and how are you enjoying it? You know, honestly, this is one of my favorite nights of the year here at Dartmouth High School. So I was so disappointed when the show was originally going to be canceled because it, it's, it's too bad that kids can't be here because I feel like it just really makes you feel like you're part of this community. And so the, even though the kids aren't here, I, I'm really happy that we do have people here and that we're in, you know, we can just feel like all the kids came together to do this. Even in spite of this crisis, we all came together to do this. And I just love the feeling that I get from this whole night. So thank you all for making it happen. How sweet. Thank you very much. Miss Lassie, to you. So my favorite part of the show, as someone who's helped run it before, is actually what happens backstage and off camera. Um, something that none of you saw, maybe you heard, was all the contestants hyping each other up. They were like doing this counting, dancing, jumping craziness. But it's so nice to see in this case, all gentlemen who come together from different walks of life at school, and there's zero hesitation. They all become friends through this, because none of them can dance. Well, maybe Mason, Mason Bente is pretty <laughs> decent, but after that, we've got a lot of shakiness. So they come together on a ground that they know they're not good at, and it's the most magical, nerdy thing for a teacher to see them forget everything else but this. It's the cutest thing, it really is. Thank you very much, judges, as Thank we return you. back to our home. <laughs> All righty, curtain, please. Let's give one last round of applause to all of our contestants. At this time, we would like to present to you the top five contestants in no particular order. All righty, contestant number one, Andrew Bano. Contestant number two, Camden Lawton. Contestant number three, Ethan Moniz. And contestant number four, Nathan Stone. And last but not least, Travis Tatro. Again, let's get a big round of applause for the contestants that will not be moving on to the final round. Great job, guys. At this time, we will be asking each of you individually one interview question. Ethan, we'll start with you. If the rest of you will please head to the backstage soundproof area room until you return. Thank you. All righty, here we go. What is the most significant change you've seen in the world over the past decade, and why was it so significant to you? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, the most significant change that I've seen in the world in the past this decade is probably the influence that social media has on everybody. Um, back then, not much things were said when something would happen, but now literally if something happens, within a second, it's out, whether it's a good thing, bad thing, whatever it is, it could affect someone's life. And I think social media is a good thing, but lately it's been taken up on the bad road just for that reason. Thank you. Next contestant, please.
we have Travis Tatro. <laughs> hey, Trav, how you doing? I'm good. Good, I'm glad to hear that. My question for you, what is the most significant change you've seen in the world over the past decade, and why do you believe it was so significant? Ooh, that's kind of hard, because I see it every time in the morning in the news. I think it's the gun violence. I mean, there's way too much. We need to stop it, because it's getting annoying after a while. You see, like, people, like, saying this and that. Like, I mean, come on. This is for the U.S. people, like, for the people in the United States Army, not for people that are, like, five or six. That, that's it. Thank you, Trav. Very well said. Next contestant to the stage, please. Next, we have Nathan Stone. All righty. What is the most significant change that you've seen in the world over the past decade, and why was it so significant to you? Thank you, Hannah. Great question. I just want to take a moment to thank the judges for coming out tonight <laughs> and all the 20 people in the crowd. Um, I'd say uh, the most significant change in this decade would have to be the impact of technology and social media. Uh, it has really taken a toll on a lot of young people's minds and it has caused mental illness to blow up and um, a lot of suicides have, have happened because of that. Uh, I think that social media can be a very good thing um, in terms of the, the speed in which information is spread. Um, but I think it can also be a bad thing because it can cause people to show a side of themselves that isn't always true, and it causes them to feel like they need to raise their expectations for themselves when all they need to be is themselves in this world. Thank you, Nathan. Next contestant to the stage, please. Oh, we have Camden Lawton. How are you, Camden? I'm very good, thanks. Good, I'd like to hear that. <laughs> what is the most significant change you've seen in the world over the past decade, and why was it so significant? I think that the most significant change you've seen in the world, or recently at least, is I think we have more recently now taken a lot more awareness to mental health, especially in teens. I think that you know, for a long time, probably there's been a lot of like, um, like stigmas about mental health, and you know, you're not strong enough. Like, they think that you're weak-minded, but it's a real illness. And I think, especially around our age, like as these teenage years are so so stressful, coming with school and like you know the pressure to go to college and all that type of thing, and then you know just even the simple like everyday stresses of you know fitting in or you know coming to school like this and you know having friends, anything of that type of sort. There's a lot of different stresses around there, and I think that it's not acknowledged enough, but more recently we've taken a big stride towards the right direction in acknowledging that, um, you know, preventing suicide. There's been songs made about it. There's been all kinds of awareness and, like, mental health, even, like, months or days. Um, anything to, you know, bring light to the fact that everyone or anyone can be dealing with anything that you don't see on a day-to-day -day basis. And... Yeah, I think that's it. Thank you, Camden. And now our final contestant to the stage, please. Andrew Bannell, ladies and gentlemen. What is this? What is the most significant change you've seen in the world over the past decade, and why is it so significant? Most significant change in the world over the past decade. Hmm. Ah, uh, man, most significant change in the past decade. I think in the past decade, I've seen First off, I've just seen, I think, drugs and the awareness about drugs and how awful drugs are, that has been just increased so much. I think awareness about how bad they are and 
how they can screw up your life and how those are like, I think that's really bad. And I think the second thing is just positivity. I think people are happier. I think people are always trying to improve themselves. Um, I believe in the world that everyone is working to try and improve themselves every single day and progress daily. Um, and I think everyone just is trying to make the world a better place. While the final scores are being tallied, we would like to take this time to thank all of the people who made this night a possibility. A special thanks to the parents, administrators, staff, and students who worked behind the scenes tonight. Let's give them a big round of applause. We would also like to thank all of you for tuning in at home, at work, even in the student parking lot, and we really appreciate the, the support tonight. At this time, we would like to show you a special video of some bloopers and behind the scenes making of Dartmouth's Finest 2020.
At this time, we would like to call all of the contestants and their attendants back to the stage. Let's give one final round of applause for everyone on stage. Would the top five please stand forward? We would also like to call up the junior class advisors, Ms. Taylor and Mrs. Brittingham, to crown the champion. Tonight's second runner up is Andrew Bano. <laughs> Let's give a big round of applause for Andrew. Woo! Tonight's first runner up is Camden Lawton. Woo! Let's get a big round for Camden. And finally, the winner of Dartmouth's Finest 2020 is Nathan! Nathan! That is all for tonight. Thank you to everyone for coming out to support the contestants. And please have a great night and a safe trip home. Stay healthy, kids. Don't let the corona get to you. Hi, this is Fly. What's up, boys? Good job. 